When you render something with cycles, you get all this great bounce lighting that helps even simple scenes look amazing. When you switch to Eevee though, that nice effect is gone, at least by default. I'm Jonathan Lampel with CGCookie.com, and in this video I'm going to go over how to get perfect bounce lighting in Eevee with and without light probes, show you how to set up probes for best results, what their current limitations are in Blender, and how I think the feature could be improved going forward. The first thing to understand about Eevee and rasterization is that most effects are either in screen space or are just rendering the scene from a different view. Shadows are essentially created by taking a 360 degree shot from the light source and subtracting everything it doesn't see. That's why they have a resolution. Mirrors are made by taking a shot from the perspective of the mirror and adapting it accordingly. The more points of view you have to render from, and the higher the resolution each one is, will of course affect performance. A light probe inside of an irradiance volume object works sort of similarly. By taking a 360 degree snapshot of the light that's passing through it in its point in space, and then projecting that back onto nearby surfaces. That's super clever, but it takes a lot of memory, so we can't do it in real time. Instead, we click Bake, and that saves the probe's information as an image for later, so that it doesn't have to recalculate every frame. That means we get the nice bounce light effect, but we can't move our objects or else it won't match the bake and we'll get a bad result. Some objects, of course, like characters, kinda have to move around. So we separate our objects into two groups, those that have to move and those that don't. Other programs like Unity use the term static, so I'll stick with that phrasing and link everything that we don't move into a collection called static. Now when we bake, we can set that to be the only collection that gets calculated. Be sure to add any lights to this collection as well, or they won't affect the scene either. Now we get a really cool result where we can have an object move through the scene and pick up the bounce lighting from all the static objects. If we have more than one light probe, it'll blend between them as it moves. It only works well if probes are placed in the right spots though. In Blender, the dots are the points in space which are being calculated, so you want to make sure that those aren't being blocked by objects. Otherwise, Blender will assume that it should project the darkness that those points see onto the nearby surfaces and you'll get this glitchy result. The outer bounding box is the limit of how far the probes will project the bounce light. The inner box is the falloff, meaning that any surface inside it will receive 100% of the bounce light. As the object travels towards the outer bounds, it'll gradually receive less and less until it exits completely. Lastly, the clipping is the limit of what lights or geometry it's taking into account when baking. Think of this as how far it can see in all directions. If you understand just those basics about how light probes work, you shouldn't have much problem setting them up, except the way that they're implemented in Blender makes the process a bit more challenging than it needs to be. Let's take a look at this room as an example. I see a lot of people placing really dense grids across big areas like this, and it is one approach. It's sort of the brute force method. The upside is that you have pretty much every area evenly covered but the downside is that you're going to get some probes stuck inside of their objects that will probably cause artifacts, and it's going to take way longer to bake than it really needs to. All of the probes hanging out in empty space are pretty useless because at a certain point the difference between them is going to be pretty negligible. One or two could be doing just as good of a job. In fact, sometimes less probes can be better. The more spread out they are, of course the less detailed the result will be, but also the more smooth of a gradient you'll get. In an ideal system, we'd only place probes where we want a gradation between one and the next. Setting them up to match the geometry's detail distribution like pictured here would give just as good but often better results than just cramming them everywhere and would also bake in a fraction of the time. You can sort of do this in Blender by placing several different irradiance volumes, one for each area, and fitting them to only the size and amount that you need. This is how I usually work. However, this comes with some issues as well. Probes only blend between themselves inside of each irradiance volume and not with other irradiance volume objects, so you can still end up with headaches where it's too obvious where one's influence ends and the other's starts. Either way works though, you just have to know the trade-offs. In the future, I hope Blender can implement the following features so that we don't have to make those trade-offs in the first place. First, having manual control over where to place the probes like in other programs instead of only having a grid would immediately solve most of the headaches. Second, having a smoother step fall off for a boundary instead of a linear one would make it much less obvious when an animated object enters or leaves the volume, because even with the fall off very high, it's pretty harsh. I'll cross my fingers about those two, but in the meantime, light probes in Blender are still very capable and are a great way to get bounce lighting in real time. Of course, you can still get that effect even without probes just by placing more lights like they used to do back in the day, before global illumination was all the rage.
Just remember that the color of the light bouncing off a surface is going to be multiplied by the color of the material. Light is light whether it's reflected or emitted. Mentally trace the light as it goes around the scene and use some artistic license if you need to while placing lamps in areas which should be reflecting something back. In a lot of simple scenes, you can get great looking results in even less time and also not have to worry about artifacts or which objects are animated and all that jazz. It may be old school, but it still works. I hope you found that helpful. For a more in-depth look at lighting in Blender and how to get started with it, be sure to check out my course The Fundamentals of Digital Lighting in the link below and subscribe for more free tutorials. If you've already taken the course, let me know what you think of it in the comments below. Until next time, stay healthy and safe.